Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I'm honored to be here. This is the first time I've ever been asked to speak publicly about this photograph. <laughs> <laughs> it's always been ballroom chatter and late night third world hotel lobbies, bars, and how I would talk about this. But in my 41 years at the New York Daily News, this is the most unique photograph I've ever done. Without a doubt. And I've covered a lot of stuff, believe me. Stuff that'll invade your sleep at night, but this is really very unique. We, uh, I was working four to, uh, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. It was a Saturday autumn, 2003. And I, I got into the Dale, unmarked Daily News radio call. We have the scanners. And started picking up cryptic stuff about this uh, one apartment building in North Manhattan. Whenever the police don't want to know what you you know what they're talking about, they're very cryptic. But if you keep listening, you know you can start to ferret out what it is, <clears throat> and then you can uh, you know make your uh, put together your game plan. In any event, I told the boss, I said, look, something's going on up there, and he said, oh yeah yeah, they got some kind of animal up there, uh, some exotic animal. I said, why don't you take a ride up there? All right, fine. So I, I go up there at a real easy pace, you know, not burning my hair up, normal, which I'm normally used to doing, we're driving around rushing for a new breaking news assignment. I get there, I believe it was 145th Street around Lenox Avenue, Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard, big apartment house, and uh, I could see the police were there. I parked my car, and if you know anything about the New York City Police Department, when they get ready to do something, they shut down the block, they close off the whole area. So I got, grabbed my gear, grabbed my portable scanner, kind of looked around, figured out where the building was, where the apartment was, and I went into an apartment house across the street, and there was a security guard there. And I looked around and I said, I don't know if she's gonna let me into this building. So I, I took out my press card, and I took out uh, a portrait of Jackson, if I'm not mistaken, out of my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> what I did was I uh, walked in and I said, hi, with the New York Daily News, and uh, shook hands, and she says, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She says, uh, I says, may I go up? She says, yes, please, go right ahead. And I was quite happy to, so I, I go up, say, I take the elevator up to the fifth floor, and I'm knocking on doors and ringing bells, and no one wants to answer their door, no one. I couldn't get in, I'm saying, this is not good. So finally, I found a stairwell that actually had a window that was going up. And it was the, either the fifth or the sixth floor, and I'm a beam looking right into this apartment here. This, is, this photograph was made with 300 millimeter F28 on a Nikon D1. At the time, that was the top of the line digital. Approximately about 800 ASA sitting on a monopod, because that weighs. And I'm listening to the scanner. I got up there roughly around maybe 10.30, 11 o'clock, something like that. And this turned out to be an all-day stakeout. <laughs> now, there, there, there were vertical slats that were going down. And we still didn't know what it was, but when I saw the, the policeman setting up an airbag, this is five stories up. And they set up an airbag, which was about a, about a story deep, which was about probably 20 feet deep, which they use for jumpers, people that want to kill themselves. So when they have time, they set up an airbag so that they can prevent that from happening. In any event, there was a set of vertical slats, and I'm sitting there, I'm looking, and then I heard something about they're bringing someone down from the Bronx Zoo or one of the zoos, and then I look and I see the vertical slats, something is moving, I'm looking, and then it hit me. Once the guy said, we're bringing a tiger down, I realized this was not a little tiger. This was quite big because the vertical slats kept moving, <laughs> moving right across. I'm saying, this thing is huge. Now the Post listens to us, all Associated Press listens to us. Rather than use the walkie-talkie, I got on my cell phone, I call the office, I said, listen, this is a huge tiger. The guy in the photo assignment says, this is, no, nah, John, it can't be. I said, yes, it is. And it's too early in the morning for me to be drunk. <laughs> something definitely going on. So he says, all right, keep us advised. In any event, they set up the airbag, and they, two police, this is now roughly, I'd say, about 4 o'clock, 4.30, and two policemen take up positions, two armed with shotguns. Next thing I know, 
because the top part of the window was like uh, uh, smoke. I couldn't see up. I see a policeman rappelling down from either a 10 or 12 story building. His name is Martin Duffy. And he is on, on a safety rope. And he's armed with, that is a tranquilizer gun. You really can't see it, but he's also, it's actually over here. He, ha he has an armor light, which is a high powered weapon of war. And what he does is, they were able to move uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the curtain, the, uh, the, the, the vertical slats, and then he took the shot and closed the window. At that point, the first pictures I made were the tiger jumping. The tiger literally jumped out of the frame. So the first frame, he was jumping, but I can only see half his head, and I kept motoring. And the next thing you know, the tiger comes down and he's swatting. Now they were worried, Martin yells, I hear in the scanner, pull me up, pull me up. <laughs> so what they did was they, they tried to pull him up and then the tiger came back down and he started, I guess the drug started to wear off on him. The owner was feeding him 20 pounds of chicken a day. He was a construction worker, had a good job in a five-story apartment. He had, in one of the rooms, he had a grass set up. So they, with special light, so the tiger could, like, you know, pull on the grass and eat it and stuff. And in another, and in another room, he had a six-foot alligator. His name was Al. Very cool. Now, how the police became aware of this was the fellow who owned the tiger was playing with it, and he got gored. He went to Harlem Hospital, and the first thing that the, the doctor says is. What happened to you? He says, well, I was bit by a pit bull. A pit bull? They didn't believe him. He became very suspicious. He got in his car, he drove to Philadelphia. His mother lived in Philadelphia. His mother says, you're going to have to go to get this. His mother, his mother might have been in the medical field. So he goes to a Philadelphia hospital, and again, they start questioning him. He, come, he becomes suspicious, and he leaves. He drives back to New York, goes back to a different hospital. I believe it might have been Bellevue. And as soon as he got there with the minutes, they have their own police force there, they put out a bulletin, strange bites, and they placed him under arrest. <laughs> and the tiger was eventually tranquilized, removed from the apartment. It took four beefy emergency service policemen to carry him out. This tiger weighed 440 pounds. And I believe it was only two, two and a half years old. Do you know, do you know offhand how old it was? It was very young. So, <laughs> and there you have me. <laughs> <laughs>